Joining me now are Pastor Edward May, vacancy or interim pastor at Trinity, and Ron Yancey, the congregation's chairman. Thank you very much for being here. You're welcome. We do want to start with the good news, and that is, of course, the plan to rebuild. And to not only rebuild, but rebuild at that exact location at 9th and Highland. Why is that so important to the congregation when actually the church was in a different location? We were, yeah, that's true. We weren't too far away. We've always been in the city of Milwaukee, though. Mm -hmm. And so we're very community focused. And that's where our mission of getting God's word and the sacraments is, is all about. And so there are people that have been uh, born and uh, raised in this community for a long time. And so Trinity has become a bit of a staple uh, visually and otherwise, certainly by its message. And uh, we want to continue that because people recognize that we are part of Milwaukee and they know that that location real well. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's important. We, we want to go where people have seen us, where they know they can find us, accessibility to us. We believe that uh, Milwaukee is in a situation where there's going to be new opportunities, really, mm -hmm. for the church and the community in so many ways. So um, yeah, we, we belong there by the grace of God, and we want to stay. Wonderful. Okay. That question was asked me by a newspaper reporter back mm -hmm. in 2004 and 5 when we were building the office addition to the, um, to the building and the church. And they said that, they asked why would we stay there? Why do we invest there? Because it would like cost us about $2.8 million to build that building. And he said, why are you making that investment? And I said, it wasn't even discussed about us leaving, leaving the, uh, the uh, area. This mm -hmm. is where we belong and this is where Trinity will stay. This is home. Right. It's home. That's right. And speaking of home, 200 people in the congregation, they call that their faith home. Um, they have active members there. What can you tell us specifically about the plans for the future, plans for rebuilding for this wonderful congregation and this church family? Well, one specific thing I can tell you is that we asked the congregation what was their desire? Mm -hmm. Do we want to move or do we want to stay at our location? And it was unanimous that we wanted to rebuild. So we will. So, so their feedback was important to you. And what else is a specific plan for how to have that path forward? Well, the heart of the people is very important, but we also believe that we've been placed here not by accident, but we believe that mm -hmm. God has actually put uh, the congregation here and he has a whole lot more in store for us. So in terms of the plan then going forward, uh, we are faith operated. And so we believe that trusting him and his word, that he can provide actually far beyond anything that uh, we can imagine. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're leaning on, on the promises of God. We believe that he's given us a, a real clear, definite mission of reaching the people in this town. And actually we reach people in a, a pretty broad circle Really, people travel some distance to come to Trinity, so uh, that's, that's all important to us. Okay, all right. So can you tell us maybe perhaps what would be salvaged inside? What can you save? Um, we uh, have not been able to get inside the building. Oh, okay. okay, the city has not allowed people to get inside the building yet. Uh, I think last week the architects told us that they have some inkling of what's left in the building, but we don't know, and it's uh, too early to talk about. Okay. Well, let's talk about your story. I think it's fascinating. You were part of the original congregation, the first African-American congregation to be members at Trinity, Ron. You were just a toddler when your family started going there back I, in the I, 40s. I hope I wasn't around for the original con <laughs> congregation. No, not the original. <laughs> but in 1949, you were the first... African-American yeah, family my, to be welcomed into Yeah, my into parents this. were the uh, first African-American uh, members of the congregation. Uh, they had, at that time, they had three children, and uh, uh, we were welcomed. Uh, Pastor Tiemann, who was the minister at the time, he'd only been there a year. He started in 1948, and he came from a rural area, but uh, he embraced... Uh, having a black family there. In fact, my mother had gone to another church and they had refused to have us mm -hmm. join. And uh, 
she was riding around on the uh, streetcar and she didn't know what to do and she saw the spire at Trinity. Trinity. So did she, see that? she decided to go there and uh, they welcomed her with open arms. So that was it, that's all it took, just showed up at the door and? Correct. Hmm. There wasn't one dissent when the, we're, we're a, uh, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod is a congregation centered uh, church and uh, when the things happen, we, the, we vote at a voters meeting. That, uh, that's accepting, every member is accepted by the whole congregation. And uh, when we were put up for membership, it was unanimous, nobody. In 1949, 1949, I mean, the height of segregation, right. Right. especially in this city and lots of cities across, of course, the United States, that seems very progressive at the time, and it seems like you still have those roots. We do, and we are inclusive, again, because that's what we get from Christ. You know, it's, well, the scriptures tell us that Christ so loved the world, that he, the Father loved the world so much that he gave us his Son. And so the world includes you and me and everyone that can walk on this earth. So since he's inclusive, we're followers of him. And there's no one that uh, we would not welcome. So those early days, it still resonates throughout the congregation here and that inclusive, inclusivity, that's just, that's a really positive story. And I think it's a message we need to hear, especially these days with the times that we have. So I do want to mention this is obviously a challenging time for the congregation, but it seems like you guys are really rising to the occasion and um, really coming up, this, you know, trial by fire. So what is pulling the congregation through? I think I know. Well, you do because, you know, we, we listen to the voice of God and God does speak uh, through, the, through the word of God. And uh, he gives us so many uh, comforting assurances that he's there for us. He's going to keep us, like the 23rd Psalm, you know, he's our shepherd. He's going to uh, stay us through any situation. So we believe that. And so we're a people who are leaning on him and counting on him to keep his word. He always does. And so that's, that's why we're confident. It's not because of us, because we're so clever and smart. We aren't. <laughs> but it's because he's so kind and he is... Uh, He's going to get us through every situation. He tells us that. All things work together for good to those that love him. We do. Mm -hmm. I, 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 commented, I commented to uh, Pastor Man. I've done this a number of times. He was retired. I was retired. And I took him all the time. I said, this is not what we planned in retirement. <laughs> but God has us here for a reason. And mm -hmm. we're at this time in this place. And so we have to shoulder through. Mm -hmm. The saying is, you make plans and God laughs. That's true. Right, right. <laughs> That's basically right. what right. happens. That's what exactly. Uh -huh. So Trinity, I want to talk about the history just a little bit more. Grew up with the old city, but it actually became a church the year after Milwaukee officially became a city back in 1847. That's just a fascinating history. Can you talk about what a sense of pride that instills in the congregation? Well, we've... I don't know if that instills a sense of pride, but we're proud to be have been here as long as we have. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard for me to, to answer a question like that mm -hmm. because I'm used to being here and I have no plans to go anywhere and mm -hmm. uh, I hope Trinity will be here forever. Mm -hmm. It's kind of if these walls could talk, everything that they've seen um, and now you're rebuilding, this is like another turning point and it's seen so many in this great city. It is a turning point. And, and uh, as, as a people of God, that's exactly what the journey is. You know, we don't know exactly what the next step is going to be, but we're counting on him to get us through it. And he's always full of surprises. We love that. And we didn't really see this one coming. And somehow he can always uh, come through for us and provide exactly what, what's needed. He never leaves his people short. So. That's a whole different mark than we can get from any, anywhere else in the world. Okay. Our head elder, head elder Jim Vandermeer always says, any, whenever we face anything, he says, God will provide or God will pull us through. Mm -hmm. That's what he says, and we all believe that. Right. Well, I do want to share some thoughts that we received from our Milwaukee PBS colleague, his renowned historian, John Goethe. We all know his name. He recently wrote about Trinity, and he says this, quote, Whatever your faith or lack thereof, historic places of worship 
are among the most important fixtures of our skyline. They represent our collective memory. They connect us with our immigrant ancestors. They are irreplaceable touchstones of identity and indisputable makers of place. Well, John couldn't join us because he's out of town, but I just wanted to share those words and have you reflect on them. What do they mean to you? Is John right? Yes, it, because it really is a connecting process, as you use that term, and it, it keeps us together as, as the people. We do have uh, forefathers who've gone before us, and yet we are also people of anticipation because we know they're going to be uh, children and great-grandchildren are going to come along, and there's going to be that continuum. And that's, that's a very uh, heartening uh, message to hang on to, you know, that there really is a continuity that, that supersedes generation after generation. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're proud to be a Wisconsin historical site. Uh, we're on the National Register of Historic Sites, and the same is true for our, even our organ. Our organ is a wow. <laughs> historical <laughs> organ, right? And that was able to be saved. You think I, I, so? I, 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 we hope so. Okay. Right. We hope so. Okay. We hope so. All right. <laughs> At least a good chunk of it. We'll see. Thank you, Pastor May. Thank you, Ron Yancey, for being with us here on 1036. Thank you. Thank you.